All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our first full day of virtual programming for the Kaliba Spring Forum. Uh, we have two days of wonderful programs for you, so be sure and stay tuned for the end of this session, and I'll give you some reminders on things that are coming up today. Um, first of all, we are overjoyed uh, to welcome our special guest, Obi Kaufman, today. Um, his books are certainly uh, part of the fabric of this beautiful state that we call home. Um, and the fact that he is in conversation with uh, Stephen Sparks, who is a Kaliba board member and owner of Point Reyes Books. Hi, Stephen. Uh, makes it even more special as they are friends. So this ought to be a really great way to spend the morning. So get your coffee and uh, I'll let Stephen take it away. Thanks, Kristen. And hi, everyone. I, I was tasked with introducing Obi and I thought like who on this call does not know probably either personally or of course through the books, Obi Kaufman. Uh, I feel like Obi, you've stopped in probably two thirds of the bookstores in California on your travels. Uh, hard to say, Stephen, I, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have the roster that you all are privy to yeah. as part of the Alliance. So, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always, it's always, um, you know, I, I, I waffle between what actually is an independent bookstore and what isn't anymore. Uh, we're all in this boat together uh, defending this this industry at all. The, the idea of walking into a brick and mortar and actually being able to uh, encounter culture uh, living and alive between between the pages. Uh, so so as two thirds, probably not. I, I bet that there's more than that. Right. California well, is a pretty robust market. In that well, that's regard. great. I mean, you of, of all people would know, right? Like the the sort of the hidden gems and the sort of mm. the, the vastness of of a system. And uh, ah, it's true. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're here today. We have a brief amount of time to just kind of talk through a few things. And first of all, congratulations on the latest book, The Coast of California. Um, of course, all right. For, for us you. here in Point Reyes, uh, immediate success, just like the other the other three books now at this point. Um, hard to believe it's been three books. I remember that first year of the Field Atlas, um, and I think we were probably the last bookstore to have copies in the country. I I had went all all in. I think we had two hundred and fifty copies, and I was mailing them out to Wisconsin and Hawaii, and it was kind of amazing to see. Um, oh you know, yeah! And so oh, you yeah. made this incredible splash. And you had this long-term project in the works, um, a project about, you know, California natural history and ecology. But, you know, the thing that really strikes me the most uh, maybe about the books is that they're as much about story as mm. they are um, anything else. Do you agree? Is that a, a proper way to read your work that, that this is, this is storytelling? Yes. Yes. Uh non-linear, perhaps even non-narrative storytelling, which is, a, which is a, um, which is a uh, you know cloud-like space to occupy, uh, but but yes, on on a in a rhetorical context, I would say that these books are very much about not necessarily uh, exploring talking points to making a better argument, but rather establishing a context for a greater identification uh, and characterization of this hyper object called California and my relationship very personally to it, right? Not in any sort of like didactic or pedagogical uh, framework, right? I, I don't make textbooks, but what it, what it is, 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 a, uh, is a, a song, a love song even to, to lament my, my affection, boundless as it is for this, for the more than human world that uh, that occupies so much of my heart. I mean, the thing that strikes me so much, I mean, because they are edifying, right? You can, mm -hmm. you get the, you get the geology, you get the, the, the botanical information, um, but it is all filtered through um, your lens, correct? You know, it, it's coming from Obi Kaufman. And it feels to me, you know, the, the success of these books, even beyond California, you know, I have friends on the East Coast who uh, talk about, these, these books and how they have them piled up at home that uh, like certain books come along at the right time, 
And, mm. and these feel like they've really kind of tapped into something. We can, we'll, we'll say it's the zeitgeist, <laughs> mm. you know, um, but I mean, maybe, you know, you think, you think a lot about systems and you know, sort of how, how these kind of accumulate and then disperse and, and you know, how kind of it is, but can you, is that maybe it's not even your task, but can you think, you know, it, does it feel to you that you've tapped into something here or is this just, you know, because you're alive now and, and you're thinking through these things in a way that, um, that we sort of all desperately need to, that you've tapped in, tapped into something here? Uh, well, well, thank you. Yeah. There's, there's a larger arc at play here. You know, I guess I'd agree with Ed Abbey who said, you know, books are like eggs. They're best enjoyed fresh. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think that um, uh, when I started writing the first book, The California Field Atlas in 2015, if you can stretch your mind back then, uh, the, the, the zeitgeist was, was changed, the, 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 the ghost of time that is this, um, that is uh, popular culture uh, and uh, culture within the various movements as they were towards uh, something that is near and dear to, I'm sure, all of our hearts and, and fills us with uh, uh, nights of anxiety, the idea of climate breakdown by way of anthropogenic global warming, uh, which seems to be in every facet of our lifestyle and culture somehow related. We've got, uh, we, well, what we had was, was, was a much different place. I, I was pretty sure we were on the road, for example, to having our first female president who had a, a semblance of, of what could be called an environmental policy, for example, right? Well, uh, spoiler alert, we, that didn't happen, right? Um, and, and, and even, I mean, on a much more personal level, you see, I am proudly, uh, I, I'm proud to say that I'm published by Heyday Books, that, uh, that excellent publishing house out of, out of Berkeley that is, that is only a few degrees degrees away from being an activist organization itself. Um, uh, one of the things that happens when you hang out with Heyday Books a lot is you hang out a lot with Native Californians, uh, the indigenous cultures, the indigenous sovereignties across the state. For among other things, they publish news from Native California. And uh, what I have found in my own investigation over the years was how completely tied to the land, its health, its biodiversity, its services are the indigenous technologies of this state for thousands of years back into deep times, such that I am confident to say that nature doesn't exist in California without the regimes implied, uh, the regimes imposed rather from uh, native cultures across um, uh, across California uh, for at least the past 6,000 years or so since, since uh, the climate has stabilized enough. San Francisco Bay, for example, came into existence and, uh, and uh, regular hydrologic and climatological patterns emerged and have largely gone un unbroken. Uh, now that being said, right, I'm, I'm, when I set off to make these books originally, I had a foggy notion of the still very much alive, vital and even resurgent native cultures of, of California. Uh, so much so that I wanted to uh, I wanted to set about like even like reclaiming all the indigenous names for the great landforms of California, right? If I if I could if I could rebrand California in this kind of context, uh, what what a great project that might be, even even more so than than the thing that 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 I eventually made. And yet, my first editor, Lindsay Bear, who um, uh, herself has many tribal affiliations and relations. Um, uh, said one, that's not your story to tell, and two, you're going to get it wrong. It's it's so it's so complex and diverse uh, native culture in California, um, and 
and uh, and remembered only by a few. Remember, we're talking about five hundred years of genocide, slavery, and and uh, and ultimately attempted erasure uh, by you know imposed by settling cultures of Euro America. Feeling that in my heart, Stephen. Feeling that. Um, trauma across the landscape was another aspect that I was not prepared to encounter as, as, as me, the babe in the woods, quite literally <laughs> uh, uh, exploring California's nature, thinking that this must be the, naively, this must be the way that it's always been. Uh, when in fact, uh, the relationship is is so complete as to not even be two things necessarily between uh, indigenous culture and diversity and 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 California ecology and uh, and um, biodiversity therein. So we've we've got uh, we've got some reckoning to do. That's why chapter ten of this new book is all about the idea of justice at all. Right. Get not only not only is the main theme of my book between connectivity between habitat spaces, of course, but connectivity between uh, members of my own species. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, you talk about the diversity of Native California, Indigenous California. I mean, there were hundreds of hundreds of languages, even right. Just uh, I mean, micro languages in the valleys. You know, Jaime de Angulo, uh, the kind of great. Uh, um, wild man linguist in the early 20th century um, mm -hmm. oh, dug, in, for sure. dig, dug into a bunch of that um, one of the things that you know that I want to ask is that you know you you talk and in some ways it feels as well that your book is both a reckoning with with the past 500 years of genocide but also in, in a sense like a, a way for you you know a native-born Californian grew up here you you have your roots here but is to become I'm native, not in the sense of an appropriation or indigenous to the land, but you like this California is the California that you know. And I feel like so many of us have in the United States and in, in any kind of settler colonial country have this kind of fraught rec you know, reckoning to do with our past and with our place in the land. And is it fair to, to say that these books are, are that, that they're a, an investigation and, and try to uh, maybe a, a sense of your own deepening on the land, in the land, through the land. Um, mm, that's well said, yes, all three of those things. Um, I am uh, uh, always endeavoring. I think this is the calling of my heart. Remember that I have a, I have a, I have a vocation. I don't have a job. I, 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 I've, I've eschewed that at this point, you know. Uh, uh, um. Booksellers can, uh, uh, we sympathize with oh, that. We oh, know the, voc the vocation versus a job. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yeah. sure, right, right. Even even to qualify it as a labor of love, to use mm -hmm. that cliche, <laughs> seems, seems a bit trite. Yeah, this is my life. My whole life is attending to this calling to endeavor to be more from this place and letting that and, and, and the way that I do it, I suppose, is the, 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 the technical mechanics of my vocation, right, is this consilient theory between uh, employing all the humanities at my disposal with uh, well-cited and researched uh, physical science, right? So we've got the scientific innovation, we've got, we've got the uh, traditional ecological knowledge, TEK, the other tech, and, uh, and together, uh, we get this. We get this beautiful sort of uh, marginal effect occurring. A marginal effect is an ecological term that two ecosystems overlap inside of what the space known as an ecotone. You get you get increases in biodiversity, right? So so just as 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 that sort of Venn diagram might work spatially, so too does it work conceptually. Where I have uh, you know be, be, between between the um, the aesthetic and the philosophical and the 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 empirical and the verified i have this uh, this melding of worlds inside of myself uh all the while tapping into and acknowledging and bearing witness to the trauma on the land as evidenced by historical record 
and uh, if if you know all, always acknowledging where who came before why the land looks like it does because of a relationship with anthropogenic forces that have been um, that have been here so completely that I I challenge a lot of the linguistics, a lot of the dialectics, a lot, actually a lot of the particular vocabulary we use in, um, for example, describing policy, policy, uh, public policy or otherwise, where we have words like uh, wilderness or, uh, or even, or even uh, words like uh, conservation, which implies resource spending, which therefore necessarily implies the commodification of nature on to some level or or even or even preservation preservation implies that nature is some sort of static thing that is not changing and evolving all the time reacting and adapting or or even and here's a touchy one restoration implying implying that we can go back implying that as david rains wallace says uh we can put an explosion back together uh you know, they, they, they work in specific contexts. I understand that. And, but I think that there are better words out there. One of, one of my favorite words these days would be, would be rematriation, right? Not only, not only does it, does it imply a, the agency of the human hand, uh, and the agency of a community to respond to its, to it, to the reality of it existing inside of a living network and not being a part of it. So, to uh, are are we part of nature intrinsically? Rematriation gets to gets to also this 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 land give back movement that we're seeing across California now too, where we're where we are 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 returning unceded lands to our precious Indi uh, Indian sovereignties across the state and acknowledging, uh, acknowledging that a course correction is needed with our overarching attitude towards um, justice. Mm -hmm. but, but this is getting, this is getting, this is, uh, you know, I like to tread into the ethical realms here, Stephen, if you want to get back to why a book at all, for example, to, <laughs> to, you know, for specific difference to this crowd, you know, I'm happy to do that too, you know. Well, so much of this is providing the context that I think booksellers love to have, you okay, know, and, and, love, and love to talk about. Um, I certainly do, because you've turned the idea of an atlas even on its head, you know, these, mm. here's, a, here's the California good atlas, don't use this as an atlas, you know, this is just more sort of an atlas, you know, uh, to steal the title of another book, Atlas for the Heart or Atlas of the Heart, you know, that, that sort of like, it grounds us, it situates, it situates us and, you know, it'll give you the, the facts and various things, but it also, it opens the door to lead us to think about our place in this state, you know, and then larger, of course, like in this, on this, in this country, in this world, etc you know keep going out you know keep pulling the, the shell off and get uh, deeper um and i think about that the word that i think about a lot is entanglement it, it seems mm. like to me like we're increasingly realizing our our sense of it being entangled with other beings and other people mm. and uh and i think your work does that so to kind of we'll pivot back so maybe you know there's booksellers on the call if you if you wanted a bookseller to know anything about the origin or the process. You know, I know you, in the new book, it kind of the, the spine of the book in some ways is the, it's a great walk you did on the, the coastal trail. Mm, um, that's right, that's you know. right. And so, you know, like, what's the view? What's the view from your two feet on the ground as you're trudging through California? And, and you as, got it. Yeah, you're my like, number one salesman, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think it gets back to, 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 to the two words that I novelly put together, right, six years ago, which would be field and atlas, right? Field atlas. And if I could, uh, if I could uh, point to, um, to that as 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 a starting place right these aren't field guides i've never made a field guide and i often hear the book referred to as such it's not it doesn't describe necessarily the what of nature 
that a field guide does. If you want a field guide, go get my, my you know, um, go get uh, uh, Jack Laws, John Muir Laws' books. Like he, like nobody does it better than him as far as that goes. And I wouldn't even want to try, right? So, so I needed, I needed to invent a thing that described this particular particular character of California that I was going after, uh, and 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 so. So it's not the what of things that a field guide. It's not like the where of things, like a, a what you would think of as a normal atlas, like like a road atlas, for example, will will tell you how to go places. I don't tell you how to go anywhere, right? Um, I uh, uh, I'm much more interested in the how of things. How do these big systems work together, coalesce to make this uh, unique slice of reality that is California? Right, so I am not. Um, uh, I, I'm very careful about the the the, uh, the 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 quality of voice that I give in these in these books, and the uh, and the type of information that I that I impart as well. You know, I mean, I I I knew that these books from day one had to do a couple of things. One, I wanted the whole thing to just drip with color and soul. Right on, and and so so you could pick it up on any page, crack it open, and and learn something new. But apart from being like a, a little nugget of trivia, you'll find that that piece of 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 knowledge aggregates out towards this 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 networked system of of ideas that work to orient oneself in. Uh, space certainly, but also in time going forward, with specific deference to 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 philosophical ideas like hope and justice and uh, what ultimately it means to be from a place. So the, the the these books are big; they keep getting bigger. But fortunately, fortunately, the metaphor that California becomes right this artist looking at nature and using the scale of California to do that. California sort of like evaporates almost to become like this, just like this, 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 uh, this subject of my own investigation, my own creative drive. So I am, um, so, so, so I use California as this metaphor for, uh, 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 it's, it's as if, it's as if I'm, these books are not about California, but an artist looking at California. And even below that, it's an artist figuring out how their own mind works and California disappears into the foreground. If, if, you know, if I were to uh, 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 get abstract about it, which I'm want to do <laughs> now, I'll, you know, um, I think that uh, uh, California is big enough depthless enough such that I could keep going. I could make a hundred maps a day for the rest of my life and never tell the whole story that I wanted to tell. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, maybe, uh, well, I see Kristen coming back. So we, oh, only a few minutes. Um, so yeah, you have a few more books in this series coming. Um, can you briefly mention, or is it do. superstitious? Do you feel like maybe? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> oh, you all, you, you all might understand how the industry works. My, my <laughs> publisher wants uh, the manuscript for the next book by September. So I am working around on the clock back in it, giving everything I've got for the next book, which is the deserts of California in the fall of 2023. And then the sixth book in the series, the state of fire, how, where, and what, why California burns will be here uh, a year after that. So, so, but meanwhile, I've got the book tour. I'm coming out to see you, Stephen, on May 28th. We're doing a walk on, in Point Reyes, aren't we? We are doing a walk at the seashore. Kind of like I was saying before we, we hopped on live, this is our dream event. You know, we get to go, mm. I get to get out of the store for a bit. We get to chat some more. I have a, a bunch more questions that I'm going to, you know, get in your ear about then. Um, we, uh, we're coming up on our time, but there is a question from someone. Um, Amanda asks if, you've, um, if you're pleased that the California Golden Chanterelle has been chosen by the California Mycophiles to be proposed to the state legislature as the state mushroom. Do you, do you, how do you feel about that? Do you know, have you heard this news? 
uh, well, uh, I would love to have a grand talk on mycology. Um, uh, I there there there's a lot to talk about there. Uh, as far as a particular symbol uh, for what the state chose, I, I have no idea what that really means. All right, so so um, uh, we we should we maybe 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 the. Uh, the extinct California grizzly will now be walking across a field of chanterelles. That'd be all right. There, it's a fun, it's yeah. a funny little shroom. You know, it only comes it only it only comes up um, in uh, you know after a very cold, wet rain in February, and it usually just comes up in our oak woodlands. Usually about just just towards like the shade line of a big oak tree, if you will. Look for those 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 fun ears coming up uh, through the ground, but. Uh, 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 know know your mushrooms if you're going to pick them and eat them and if you and if you do uh uh you know chanterelles are beautiful little olive oil salt and pepper uh throw them into an omelet perfect yeah. we'll, we'll look for the mushrooms of california in 2028 whenever <laughs> um well and it's you know and that really you just kind of riff on that and there you go like there it's so generative the state and the the ecology of it and mm. and the stories that are that are in it um and California has always kind of been that, right? It's always been this both mythical and real place. And uh, you straddle those lines so well in these books that it, uh, you know, it makes for pretty, pretty profound experience of both reading and just absorbing. Like a lot of times I'll just pick it up and flip through and I kind of let it wash over me in this way that feels like. Oh, thank uh, you, brother. Well, I'm such a fan of the work you do. And I stand in such solidarity with the California Independent Books. Dollars Alliance. I, I, I appreciate the work you all do so much. You're, you are on the front lines of dis defending uh, literacy in a culture uh, uh, that is, is, is suffering from, from a kind of intellectual anemia. Uh, and, and you are the protectors, the stalwart defense that we have uh, of, of, of what is true in the world and uh thank you all so much for your work i take inspiration from every single one of you every day thank you so oh, much for having thank me. you obi that's so great i'm so glad we have that recorded we're gonna have to get that printed on something that was beautiful <laughs> i can see why you've asked obi to join us today I know, yeah. right? this, is, this is why we asked him to kick us off because he is it's so beloved by um by all of the booksellers that have joined us and those who weren't able to come, but like I said, we have it recorded, so we'll have um we'll have it up on the website soon, so you guys can can check it out. And thank you, Stephen, as always for being so great to us and always willing to jump in and help. We appreciate you and Obi having you here to give, as Stephen said, context to the book and give us um, a little more information on it and talk so passionately about it. Really helps us as booksellers to um, to continue to sell your books, uh, books that we all really really. Really love. So thank you both so much. 